All right, it's been a while since I've played with glass tubes, and today we're gonna just kind of practice some techniques here. The last time I did, I've only done two glass builds actually in my YouTube career. I don't remember which ones they were. One of them's still together over there actually, but the other one, I forget what it was. Oh, the D-frame build, that's right. And I remember people yelling at me that I was doing it wrong. And I thought to myself, well, I scored the glass, I broke the glass, I filed the glass, I put it in the system and it's holding water. So what did I do wrong? Well, we were watching some glass blowing videos today and we decided, hey, let's try this ourselves. So today we're gonna show you guys how to properly score and cut glass, the tools you need to do it, uh, if you wanna do straight pieces. And then we're gonna play around with some heat. Yes, I know MAP gas isn't exactly the right type of fuel to use this because it doesn't burn as hot as oxyacetylene. However, this is uh, what I've got and I was, I was able to make a very phallic looking piece of glass before this video, so bite me. NZXT's starter PC series now starts at $699 and gives you everything you need to get into the world of PC. Available in multiple configurations, the starter PC can be tailored to meet your budget and needs and are the perfect way to build a work or learn from home setup while still being capable of 1080p 60fps gaming and popular titles like Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, and League of Legends. All of NZXT PCs come back with a two-year warranty on parts, labor, and RAM overclocking, helping to guarantee the best gaming possible for your build. To see the full list of specs and pricing on the NZXT starter PC series, click the link in the description below. All right, so the glass that we're using here, you can buy from just about any like major water cooling supplier. Um, it is uh, borsilicate is the type of glass, actually, if you're wondering. There's different types of glass, obviously. I guess borsilicate would be much more of like a laboratory grade. I guess the same kind of stuff they make like beakers and, is that what they're called, beakers? Okay, I was thinking that was a character on Sesame Street, but that's Meeker, right? <laughs> or Muppet Babies. Wow, okay, that went weird. So first things first, they come in these links. Like this is an uncut piece right here. They're not very long. So most of the time you're not gonna be able to make a very long run, at least not with the pieces that I've got. You could probably get them much longer. The chance of them being dam damaged in transit is gonna be even higher. Um, they're usually wrapped pretty good. They come like this. Usually there's three or four of them in a bubble wrap and then each one of the tubes themselves has a lot of tissue paper wrapped around it. This is 12 millimeter diameter here. You got 12, 13, and I believe 16 has kind of made its way around now. So. What we're gonna show you first of all is how to get the length to where you want it. So what you need to do that is gonna be a pretty, there's different types of scoring tools out there. I've tried the ones that look like clamp pipe, uh, pipe clamps where you turn it, turn it, turn it. It uses basically a diamond blade because remember diamond cuts glass pretty easily. But I didn't like that one. It just, I found that it spiraled and it kind of walked. So as I was turning it, it didn't stay on exactly square because the blade would sort of bind. And by doing that, it would just sort of walk and make a spiral, which isn't what we want. So what we are going to do here now is get my marker, because I forgot to get my Sharpie. So let's just say for instance, uh, this is the piece we wanna cut. And we go, okay, we need it to be you know, right there. We need our scoring tool. I'll put a link to this on Amazon from Amazon. I got this years ago, but it's pretty basic. It's a, it's a chain that's got those little blades, like I said, but only a lot of them that go around and clamp around the glass, and then this will lock down on it. The other thing you're gonna need is some gloves and you're gonna need a mask because what this can create every time you snap it is glass dust. Uh, really fine particles that you can't even necessarily see, smell, or feel but can still make their way into your lungs, that's bad. So you want to protect your breather with a, a, some sort of like a N95. Yeah, so something good for particulates like that. And why was it coming over here? Oh, gloves, that's right. These aren't matching gloves. And they're two right hands. All right, so we got our gloves on here that are gonna protect us from getting cut. Also need eye protection because when you go to score and snap it, you don't want any bits to come flying in your face. If you do it right, it should not be a very violent snap. We have a spray bottle with water. You could use spit for this part, but I prefer to just use a spray bottle of water because it's much nicer. Now the nice thing about this tool is the fact that you can adjust you know, how big of a diameter you can deal with. Hold that like that. You can hear it sort of scoring the glass. This is a very feel-based thing. The intervals at which those links are, are gonna make it either too loose or too tight. So if you clamp it all the way down, you're gonna break the glass. You wanna hold it and start applying a slight amount of pressure until as you turn it, you hear that crunching sound. Now if I loosen this, we take a look at it, you can see I've scored the glass all the way around. Now what we can do, we just take a little bit of water this is where science comes in and magic happens. The water makes it easy to just snap it like that. So now 
what you get are these really, and that looks broken, but it's not, it's just the water. You get a really clean break, right? That's really, really clean, but it's sharp. Here, listen to my glove. See, it's sharp. See what I'm doing to the table? That's gonna cut your O-rings, obviously, and it's weak now. Because we just scored it, there is a portion at which the glass becomes weak right there. So, that's where this guy comes in. Now, one of the things that we can do, that I like to do anyway, is I like to always take my stuff. I know the people out there that do glass work are looking at me right now going, what are you doing? You can't put that sort of lateral tension on there. It's just gonna break it. You're right. But that's why I'm just holding it, like barely clicked in there so it turns. Now you're gonna notice something that happens here as you start to heat it. Watch when I heat down here, the, the flame stays blue. But the hotter it gets, it turns orange. See that? So that's where you start to know you're getting good temperature on the glass. The battery's dying. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this file and just hold it against the edge as it's turning. Take this little uh, 2000 grit sandpaper. Ooh, see how hot that is? Don't touch. Now I use this guy to help cool it down without cooling it down too quickly, but now look at this. See, we can't make any marks on the table now because we've gotten rid of all those sharp edges. And I just felt a little bit of that heat through the glove. The glass will hang on to the heat for a bit. That's what this is for. It gets uh, cool again pretty fast. It's a little dirty right now because of the gloves, but it gets cool again pretty fast once you uh, get it wet. Now we can just sort of clean the glass. So I want to talk about the, the proper way of breaking the glass after you've scored it. One, the score needs to be all the way around. It has to be all the way around. Um, if you don't break it all the way around, you'll end up with something sort of like this. This is a really bad score, and this is a piece I saved. This is a years old piece of glass, because this is when I was learning, and I would get the length marked, because what I would do is I would use PETG or acrylic to get all my bends done in the system. Then those are just used as templates to make my glass. So you can see right here, I did not have a good score. It didn't go through the surface of the glass far enough, so when I broke it, it was extremely jagged. That's a throwaway piece. And you can see the one that we just did, Okay, this is a machine cut. This is how the machine cut it, because when they cut this stuff in the factory, they've got a special diamond blade with water and all sorts of stuff that cuts this perfectly clean and even bevels the edge slightly. This is the one I did by hand. Sure, it's got what looks like a little bit more jaggedness to it. I think that's down inside the glass slightly, which is why we heated it like we did, but it's smooth and uh, it's gonna slide into our fitting just right. But the way that See, here's a score that I did right here as a practice, right? This is not a good score. You can't even feel this with your fingernail. In fact, I'll try and break that right now to show you how bad it is. But when you go to score it, you wanna grab it with your thumbs and your fingers like this, about an inch away or about 25 millimeters away on either side. And you want to apply pressure like that. So you want to take these fingers and sort of push it against your thumbs and pull away. That's how you get a nice, really, a nice good score. Now let me put my mask back on real quick and show you guys what happens if I try to crack that, which is a terrible score. So if we look at this score, you can see a little bit of the glass dust because I went, I pushed real hard right there pressure wise, but then look as I go around. See how that doesn't really have much of a score? So I'll show you right now how bad the break would be. That actually went really well. When you try and screw up and you can't, but you want to show people you're a professional and you only screw up. That's Jay's two cents. Now, when it comes to putting it on to, you know, the fitting and stuff, the edge is nice and rounded now, so you're not gonna cut this O-ring. Look at these O-rings. These are tiny guys, right? So, you take this guy, wet the end of the glass a little bit, so you have a little bit of lubrication, put on the O-ring, and slide on your collar. Kind of twist as you're going. There, that's in there. And there you go. You've got your 
glass tubing. So here's something people tend to forget though when it comes to glass. Obviously, you can't just sit there and, and squeeze on it like crazy. You're gonna have to uh, find the right amount of tension to where it obviously doesn't leak. But then at the same time, it's all the way down in there and it seals completely. So I'm just gonna kind of twist it as I work it in there. See how it slid down in there? Now the collar is where it's compressing that O-ring against the, the outside diameter of the glass and against the, ins the outside of the inside bore of the compression uh, fitting. So you're just gonna kind of go until it won't go no more. There you go. Now the clarity of glass versus like PTG or acrylic, look at that. There's just nothing like that. It makes me wanna do another glass build. But one of the things that's always kept me from doing glass builds is the fact that you have to use fittings for all the bends. That's not inherently a problem, unless you just want nice bent tubes and you don't wanna spend a crap ton of money for all those extra fittings. So that's why today, now that I've showed you what I already know, we're gonna try and learn something together. Disclaimer. I am not an expert at working with glass. I am, you, I can't even talk. I am wearing the wrong kind of footwear for this as I'm wearing open-toed shoes. Same. We all are, I think. <laughs> this next part you do as you will and not as I say, because I'm just experimenting. Because I looked at it this way. If you heat plastic to bend it, you just heat glass more and bend it, right? It wouldn't be Jay's two cents if there wasn't some level of jank. I like to use my drill, like I showed you guys, as a home makeshift lathe, because I don't have a lathe. So I've chucked it up into my drill. Yeah. I know it will bend, because I've already done it. It's not a very good bend, but it's my first. How many of you guys had perfect first bends? Not many of you, I'm sure. So, what we're kind of playing with here is the bending radius to keep it from crushing on itself, because I don't have a mandrel, and it's not a long enough piece for me to be able to blow into because, you know, when you blow into glass, that keeps it from collapsing on itself. I don't think I could cap these off because then I'd figure if the air was in there, the air would st probably still compress enough to where it would, it would collapse. So what I did here, what I did is heated up the, the glass real, real, real hot in one spot so the weight would make it bend on itself. But the problem is, as you can see, it flattens out the outside and it crimps the inside. Sure, you'd still get water flow through here and it'd be perfectly fine. It's just aesthetically not pleasing. So that's why I wanna see if I heat up a little bit wider area, will we be able to uh, get it to bend more of a smooth radius? So let's talk about the temperature here real quick. Like I showed you earlier, when I'm hitting it with the torch, you see the, the flame continues to be blue all the way across. See that? Once that area starts to get hot, it starts to turn a very bright orange. If you've ever watched a glass blowing video, you've seen that the flames are very orange. Now they're dealing with much hotter gases than I'm dealing with here. So the map gas will take a little bit longer. If you're a gearhead or somebody at home that has a shop and you have an oxyacetylene torch in the garage, yeah, light bulb, because that's much hotter gas and it will work really well. I'm only rotating it so that we're applying the heat evenly around the glass, not getting a hot spot on one side. But then once it starts to droop, then I'm gonna stop spinning it. Otherwise it'll just By God, I think my second one was the one. That was only my second time ever trying to bend glass. It's just like acrylic. It just takes a lot longer. I'll be dipped. Smart man said that once. All right, so now I'm just gonna cool this down with the little vac vacuum blower here thingy. It's not a vacuum, it's a blower. So I don't know why I said vacuum blower, but whatever. It's vacuuming on that side. So like I said, after you've heated the ends when you cut it and you don't wanna spray water on it, don't spray water on it either after this point. Um, I've gotta say, for that being my first attempt, and that being my second attempt, I think I adjusted pretty quickly. That did not crush on itself whatsoever. So no mandrel was even needed. That's the first thing that surprised me. Second of all, the clarity of this, I think I need to do another glass build in the future because I, I, I would not try a double bend. I mean, maybe I would if I had plenty. 
<laughs> frame it. Yeah. <laughs> my first. Second, perfect. technically oh, yeah, second. second. My first perfect 90 degree bend, that was eyeballed too, look at that. So yeah, now what I would do is, uh, and this is the part that would be scary, because I would bend it first, and then I would chop the ends to be the length I need them to be. The thing that sucks about glass versus like acrylic or PETG is you can easily trim plastic and, and acrylic. Notice I said acrylic's not plastic, because it's not. If you screw up and you score it wrong and you snap it wrong, then that bend is wrong, because you have to do the piece again. Minimum distance of being able to crack the tube is something to talk about. So if you wanted to trim like an inch off, that's not gonna happen. You're not gonna be able to get the leverage you need on it. Let's say that blemish right there, that's the mark we wanted to cut it. So let's say that was the mark. You're, you're not gonna be able to score that because you can't get, and I've tried. I've tried going, okay, what if I wrap it in a cloth and then I take pliers? No, the, the grip, the amount of strength it takes to clamp the pliers onto it, it will just break pieces off and it won't work. I've, I've got pieces that look like that. So I say, if it's longer than being able to get at least two fingers on it, like that, like if it's shorter, I mean, then you, you're not gonna be able to break it cleanly. That's when you would need to have a proper glass saw and then you could chop it, you know, and, and all that stuff. So, so you wanna be extremely precise. And like I said, what I always do, and I don't have any scraps, Hanging around to show you guys, do I? Uh, yeah, I do. Look at the clarity difference between these two. With the light shining through it, it just refracts all perfectly in there. This video needs some J effect to it, not just a tutorial sounding all smart and shit, because we need to do something stupid. Dude, it, it's just like acrylic, only it's glass. Like, the, the way it behaves and everything. Like, I would swear that that's acrylic right now. Ooh. That's cool looking. I made a spiral! <laughs> I'm a glass blower now. No, okay, I'm, I don't send me your hate mail. I'm aware of how bad this is. <laughs> but I'm really just showing how like, Nobody touched this. It's really, it's really hot. <laughs> okay. Nobody touched that. It's hot. Dangerous. Danger. I love how it's like impossible to see against the floor. See? The, the acrylic behaves in very much the same way, only much sooner. <laughs> oh, oh, it's molten. It's molten. Okay. That's where we stop. So, we like to make videos when we do things. It's time to get out of here. So, what I need you guys to do is sound off down below if you guys want me to do a build utilizing, you Utilizing glass tubing again, but this time. It's burning your glove. <laughs> yeah, it's still really hot. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this is where I need you to sound off and tell me if you want me to do a glass tubing build again. Um, it's a possibility of me burning myself. I had clearly put a hole in my glove. Right now, I was like, what's that smell? Oh, that's me. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, expert glass blowers and stuff. Comment if there's any particular tool or anything I could get to make this any sort of, you know, any easier on me. Uh, this scoring device works really well. It's just finicky to use, but as you can see, I did a pretty good bend without even uh, having to try. So, well, I tried twice. Thanks for watching, guys. Trying to come up with some creative content right now in this tech lull. So, we appreciate you guys watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one. Hey, let's heat the bottle.